speaker. You are one of those speakers that are um, very decisive and we understand you have survived the motion of uh, no confidence. If you like, some may call you Ponyuka <laughs> Bampet. <laughs> Is yeah. that so? Uh, well, uh, Titus, we are just generally grateful mm-hmm. uh, for the trust that have been bestowed upon us by the majority of councillors in the city of Ekurule, mm-hmm. which obviously represent the majority of the citizens uh, in Ekurule. This just highlights the, the validity of the work that we've been doing with our colleagues, and it shows that there is indeed hope in Ekurule. Mm-hmm. And we saw that the mayoral committee has been dissolved. Our f- MMCs as well have been removed after the mayor was also removed um, in Ekurulene following a council uh, meeting. Your take? Well, my take is that we need to understand that governance is, co-governance is a very difficult space. Mm-hmm. Co-governance is a difficult space in that there is generally a lot of instability. There is generally negotiating and renegotiating here and there. And the differences are many uh, in the sense that we've had a ruling party, which is the ANC, that has not put together a framework for us to be able to follow mm-hmm. in order to stabilize this type of co-governance. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very sad uh, for the people of Egruleni because you would know that our MMCs were very hardworking. I mean, all of us take from our number one ground force, uh, the mm-hmm. CIC commander in chief. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's he he doesn't expect us to do anything that he wouldn't do. So we have all been emulating his example in executing our duties, and our MMCs were doing exactly that, and they were improving the lives of the people of Ekurulen. Does this development in any way derail us as uh, ground forces from the? actual mandate of uh, delivering services to the people doing door-to-door, particularly ahead of the elections? It must never, uh, Titus, it must never in the sense that everything that we do in the EFF, Mm -hmm. it's based on our seven cardinal pillars, is based on our founding manifesto, is based on our elections manifesto. So mm-hmm. it, it it does not derail us in any way. It actually motivates us to work even more to show the people of Ekuruleni that we are worthy of their votes and that they are worthy of the servants that we are for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some accuse you of being partisan when you're presiding over the affairs of uh, the city uh, council. Is, 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 is there anything to write home about? Uh, well, uh, when we took up the, the responsibility of being mm-hmm. the speaker, we did uh, take an oath of office mm-hmm. and then we did commit to to be impartial and independent in our approach. Mm-hmm. And I believe, Titus, seven days ago, mm-hmm. a majority of the councillors that we work with have given us a motion of confidence to say we are indeed doing that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people may not, may not necessarily like how we handle things uh, how we are doing things as deployees of the EFF is very radical, mm-hmm. is very different, and it becomes a shock to most people when they see what we are doing uh, with so little time in the space of governance. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe there's anything to write home about. We've been doing the work. A motion of confidence has been given to us to continue doing the work of uh, Council of Ekrulen. Stand up, South Africa! Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run, South Africa! Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a COVID thing. The people of South Africa, Africa and the world, thank you very much for tuning in to this week's edition of the EFF podcast. My name is Titus Tungu and we're coming to you from Winnie Madigizela Mandela House. And in this episode, we track developments from the city of, uh, of Ekuruleni 
after the mayor was ousted by the city uh, council, uh, which also led to the dissolution of the mayoral committee. We understand that the EFF had uh, five MMCs in that uh, city. So now to make sense of the developments from the city of, of Ekurulene, we are joined by uh, the speaker of Ekurulene, Faitan Tabiseng Chivenga. Karaz, uh, welcome to the EFF podcast and um, good afternoon to you. Ah, So we understand that um, the council has, um, in fact, removed the mayor and uh, subsequently the mayoral committee was also dissolved. But you survived the motion of no confidence. What was your reaction when uh, you first heard of the news that you actually survived? Um... Uh, Titus, what you must understand that we are not uh, in government for positions. Mm -hmm. We are in government to serve the people that uh, are our constituency. Mm -hmm. So it, it's obviously a joy that uh, uh, people would give you that vote of confidence mm -hmm. to say that you are doing what they are expecting you to, mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Um, I'm glad it's a validation that our fellow councillors, our fellow colleagues mm -hmm. have have said that they need us to continue doing the work that we've been doing. And we are very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. For the people of Ekurulene, this must be bad news because if you look at the deployed MMCs, uh, especially from the EFF, they've been hard at work, hard on the ground, uh, making sure that they deliver the services to the people. Now, what kind of impact has this development had on either service delivery or the people themselves? Well, obviously it takes us back a few steps in that uh, our mm -hmm. MMCs were mostly in service delivery departments, mm -hmm. which the core of our water, sanitation and energy, waste management, um, your parks and cemeteries, mm -hmm. uh, equally infrastructure development, health and social development and finance. So it's it's been a great gap. Uh, it's probably the longest six days th that the people of Ekuruleni have had to have without having services being executed fully. Mm -hmm. yeah. This must be a nightmare. And what are when we look at the circumstances around the removal of the mayor, can you just help us understand what are the dynamics? What is at play here? The the first important thing to note is that uh, running co-governance is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And the circumstances obviously will be around issues of policy difference. It will be around internal conflicts. It will be not having similar ideology. So oh. uh, and the mm. the the non-existence of a, a framework to actually guide um these type of um arrangement becomes a real big problem. I mean, we've seen uh, politics uh, around the issue. The politics were just frivolous and they were mm -hmm. not saying much, but we neglect to speak of the a vacuum in terms of policy guidelines as to how do you manage these type of arrangements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you look at co-governance, uh, it's something that uh, we are not particularly used to uh, in South Africa because we're used to uh, one political party, yes. you know, running the affairs of a municipality. But now things have changed. The EFF in particular is uh, is present uh, in all almost all the, the councils. Now, if we look at the role of the EFF, would you say that somehow the parties that the EFF may be in core governance with may, be, may feel threatened? Uh, Titus, we must realize that co-governance and mm -hmm. coalition started way back in 1994. Mm -hmm. So it's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. But the issue was that then it was a friendly type of arrangement where mm -hmm. we had one a majority party yes. mm -hmm. that was pulling all the strings. And for the 30 years, it's been business as usual. Mm -hmm. But with the introduction of the EFF into the political space, into the mm -hmm. governance space, it could not be business as usual anymore. And I believe also that is what is fueling the lot of tensions in Ekuruleni to 
find that the ANC MMCs are saying the EFF MMCs are outshining us. And we are saying we have the same number of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. So why don't you do what you are supposed to be doing as well? Mm -hmm. So uh, the work ethic of the EFF, I have highlighted that our president has to be one of the hardest working human beings mm -hmm. that we know. You see him in three different provinces in a single day. Mm -hmm. And that has been the work ethic translated to us as public representatives of mm -hmm. the EFF. We do not tire. Uh, we are there on the ground every day with our bikes, servicing our people, even without these positions that we have. And for the strange part is that instead of uh, that being embraced as a positive change towards restoring the dignity of our people, it's seen as a, a threat of some sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there political parties that you would say they are not or they do not have the interests of the people at heart? Of course, there are many political parties that do not have uh, the interests of uh, people at heart. And mm -hmm. I will be very clear when I speak of the DA, when I speak of Action SA and other uh, parties that do not represent majority of the people of this country. I mean, for us to take over the government of the city of Egruleni, we had a DA government uh, with a, um, Action SA and IFP Freedom Front Plus servicing only a my, minority of people in the city of Egruleni. Mm -hmm. Hence, we had to then change and bring about a, a people's government like we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about the people's government, we've seen our hardworking MMCs on the ground. If we may just highlight some of the tangible service delivery interventions that they may have led. Um, Titus, after COVID, we, we've had a lot of challenges in terms of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure meaning the financing of the development of infrastructure, the maintenance of infrastructure. Yes. So when we inherited uh, the DA government, mm -hmm. we literally inherited infrastructure that had not been maintained for a long time. We inherited um, critical water and sanitation projects that had not been finished. Mm -hmm. And we had to push for that. And MMC Msane championed that process. We've had her opening a reservoirs, new reservoirs, to give our people water. We've had her dealing with the sewer systems that have been uh, blocked for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, she's really championed that and she's been threatened, obviously, you've oh, seen yes. on social media. <laughs> when she's trying to unblock yes, sewer. I basically mean. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. So you, you contest space, you can mm -hmm. even differ over sewer. So mm -hmm. it, it shows the type of uh, people we're leading with. Yeah. But equally, uh, the issue of funding our infrastructure development was very lacking. Uh, because we are not able to, um, the city was not able to collect revenue adequately. Mm -hmm. Then our MMC of finance, Gule uh, Dunga, uh, mm -hmm. came in with uh, the Siatima uh, Manje, Namsanje program, mm -hmm. whereby uh, it was, um, uh, um, the purpose of the project was to get as much revenue in the city mm -hmm. so that we can provide more services uh, to our people. Mm -hmm. And in, equally in his attempt, he attempted to ensure that we have a paperless society whereby we don't have agendas uh, distributed on paper anymore. So all of us had to be oh. uh, uh, born after technology. Okay. Yeah. We're going digital Yes, now. we're going digital. <laughs> yeah. And then our MMC, Lishaka Manamela, mm -hmm. um, did a lot of work in terms of uh, waste management. We had yeah. had a, a situation where a person just logged in invoices from uh, waste management contractors and they just left the office. So we came in. Mm -hmm. on a pile of invoices that needed to be cleared in terms of uh, the waste management. I mean, we have systems where communities have uh, extra uh, big rooms where they are not built for their dustbins, but gradually is getting it right. And then equally, the other issue that has been a great, great challenge is the issue of insourcing workers. Oh. So the workers that are in the Department of Parks and Cemeteries are now insourced. Mm -hmm. There are people that are working for the municipality. So we don't have a contract or a tender in place for that. Okay. We are saying we want to give people sustainable work. Mm -hmm. And we have done it exactly like that. Our MMC of uh, Health and Social Development 
uh, fighter Bridget Tusi. The clinics open on time. We have medi medicine available on time for all um, uh, our patients in our clinics. We don't have that thing where people are standing in long lines anymore from 5 a.m. and so on and so on. And then our MMC of infrastructure, Hope mm Loholo, -hmm. has equally done a great job in giving our people title deeds mm -hmm. to be able to run their businesses, make profit, and equally give their families a sustainable lives. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a lot that our MMCs have been doing. Yeah, and it's palpable because when we track progress, we actually see that indeed from the EFF's side, things have started to, 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 to turn around. And when I talk about some of the things that we are seeing for the first time under the EFF government, mm -hmm. it's such things because, you know, some of us didn't know that these actually positions or portfolios of MMCs yes. until the EFF took the reins. Yes. Now, when you, you talk about the administration or the financial standing of the uh, city, mm -hmm. when you look at the DA's tenure, the uh, DA administration, the finances were not so good looking but under the EFF government under the EF uh, the MMC for finance uh, uh, commissar dunga you saw that at least the finances were stabilized revenue collection was there and ultimately you look at the the, the positive outcome in the sense of the 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 auditor generals uh, you know audit outcomes which mm -hmm. We, we got, you know, an unqualified uh, audit report, which was never the case before. Uh, Titus, the, you know, there was a lot of noise around the issue mm -hmm. of uh, the, the audit uh, report yeah. where there were claims that uh, um, Commissar Tunga is hiding the report and so on. Yes. And we were very clear. <laughs> uh, and we reprimanded the mm -hmm. media a lot. I remember one of the media houses was asking me that. And I literally asked uh, the, the journalist to say, do you think anyone has the power to hide a report of the AG? And they could not uh, even respond to mm -hmm. that. We must understand, Titus, that the city of Ekuruleni for the 2022-2023 financial year had a, an audit outcome of unqualified uh, mm -hmm. for financial information and a clean audit mm. for performance information with a surplus of almost 400 million rand. Unheard of. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the issue of, we, we, of the Auditor General's report has mm -hmm. just been politicking around the issue. And... The, the politics have quietened down since there's been that outcome, but it mm -hmm. equally shows the shallow nature of some of these political parties that are in council. I mean, the lies that they, they were spreading on social media and on the media, mainstream media, mm -hmm. you know, were very shocking and appalling. Mm -hmm. But uh, it shows as well that they have no idea what is happening in terms of how audit works mm -hmm. and... Um, how the Auditor General pronounces themselves. I mean, last week we've had a, a governance a, a ranking index mm -hmm. whereby the city of Ekuruleni is number one in Gauteng in terms of municipalities. Mm -hmm. And the city of Tswane, governed by the DA, is second last to Manga Wung of the eighth. Yeah. So it shows that uh, the mainstream media itself is extremely biased. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they base things on uh, things that are not founded. It's just uh, they, they, they are very uh, much in the political space, mm -hmm. which is not what this country needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also, as the EFF podcast, try by all means to shine a spotlight on the work of the EFF because, like you rightfully indicated, the mainstream media shies away from the good work of the EFF. So it is our duty. That's why we brought you here. Yeah. Also to talk uh, and make sense of what the EFF uh, is doing in Ekuruleni. You spoke about the, the, the work of the MMCs changing the lives of ordinary citizens. Now, the question is, with the EFF out of the picture, Will the people of Ekuruleni survive? The people of Ekuruleni need to make a choice. 
Titus. Mm -hmm. The people of Ekuruleni need to speak truth to themselves. Mm -hmm. They, the, those that have eyes must see and those that have ears would hear that the introduction of the EFF in the governance space has made tremendous change mm -hmm. to their lives. I mean, uh, there's never been a time, people are even asking me, what is the role of the speaker? Are you really supposed to be <laughs> there? What are you doing at the hostels? Like nobody goes yeah. to the hostels. So it, it's, it's, it's up to them. It's up to them to observe what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up to them to to do what is right for them for themselves and for the future of uh, the city of Ekuruleni. Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to observe what is happening in our political space. This thing of party loyalists and all these things that are not assisting us must come to an end mm -hmm. because only they have the power to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason why we are in this space is because the people are undecided. So they need to decide when we go to the national and provincial elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about um, the uh, upcoming elections in the latter part of this conversation. But now I want us to stick uh, to the issues uh, that are happening there at uh at the at the council at council mm -hmm. of the city of Ekuruleni. So when we look at the political parties, uh, the minority parties uh, that are that are forming uh, the core governance, would you then point at the ANC as uh, one of the political parties with the um, uh, more numbers in council? as the reason behind the instability, because I, I would like to believe that the an EFF government is a government that obviously serves the needs of the people and wouldn't want or imagine any disruption of their services. Who is to be blamed in the dissolution of council in, in, in Ekuruleni? Um, the vote was quite narrow. And the deciding factor was obviously a few ANC councillors who have mm -hmm. decided to go outside mm -hmm. what their organisation would have said to them uh, not to do. Mm -hmm. So to a large extent, we've had those elements that are, are, are operating outside the leadership. But equally, there's always been that issue of internal conflict. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a broader understanding of the context of the arrangement of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Because the entire co-governance structure has nothing to do with Ekuruleni. It has everything to do with the entire country. Mm -hmm. And that is why, uh, that is what the the, the, the ANC uh, people in Ekuruleni are failing to understand. Mm -hmm. And it, it goes back a long way in the sense that once you plan in small circles, it becomes a problem for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Because if we had to have a situation where we're saying, I Ekuruleni, stay in your own corner, and then Mang Mang, stay in your own corner, that thing is very detrimental to the entire country mm -hmm. in the sense that people would do what um, they, they want to do um, uh, with regards to them having uh, numbers. They call it a numerical arrogance. Sure. So what happens is that uh, there's a particular framework that the ANC tried to introduce where they said um, the majority party, the party with the most seats must be the one that take mayorship and all that. And when you look at the broader picture, there's no way you are going to even be close to being the mayor if we are not there as those parties that are uh, su supporting you. Mm -hmm. So this thing requires a lot of negotiation. It requires a lot of cooperation with with each other. And it must never be about the majority. If one had a 50% plus one, then we will call that a majority. But a simple majority where you are saying you have more numbers than us should not count. Full cooperation is what we need. Uh, so that we can ensure this thing happens. I mean, the fact that ANC has been in power alone for decades mm -hmm. and we are in the situation that we are in has shown that it, it's very difficult for them to to lead uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Hence, there had to be intervening measures that we are here. We are saying, no, 
sinipegile you can't continue to to do what you've been doing so uh, uh, the numbers should not lie to people and uh, make them think that they can run this country or they can bully other people there is no way ANC is going to get the majority anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe uh, Mshulozi once said, uh, uh, we'll see when Jesus comes. I'm sure it's <laughs> Lebanon got Good Friday. So yeah. we need cooperation. Mm-hmm. We need to coexist. The mm-hmm. future of this country is through co-governance, is through coalitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is the reality that maybe some South African may need to come to terms with. Now, Speaker, you have been accused of being partisan when you are pro- pre- presiding over the affairs of the city. Is there any truth in that? Is there anything to write home about? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's no truth to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if some of the councillors um, had to not tow the party line, sure. the picture would even be more more different than it was. Uh, Titus, we... We cooperate a lot with the people that we work in. Mm-hmm. We don't see them as political opponents, sure. but we see them as people that are there to ensure that our people get services. Mm-hmm. We we work very well with uh, the, the colleagues and counselors uh, mm-hmm. from the different political parties because uh, our work is exactly that as a senior counselor. In, in, in our city is to ensure that everyone feels safe, mm-hmm. is, is to ensure that we exercise the utmost independence and to ensure that we are impartial in our approach. Mm-hmm. A lot of people uh, tend to want to take rash decisions in that one small thing you would want to throw a councillor out, but it's not about that. Mm-hmm. One councillor, for example, represent over 5,000 votes. Mm-hmm. So when you throw a person out, you are literally throwing 5,000 people out of the council, which is a representative. Mm-hmm. Councillors have a lot of uh, privileges in, in that council. Mm-hmm. So it, it requires a person who is very patient. It requires a person who is able to hear uh, the, 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 the issues that the councillors want to raise. Mm-hmm. So um, people might not like us because obviously when they see us, they see red. Sure, <laughs> they see danger. Yes, they see red and it's a positive red. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it it's, is. It's, it's so much radicalism, so much change, so mm-hmm. much positivity <laughs> for our people. And a lot of people are complacent in the sense that, no, 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 it's too much. Mm-hmm. It's not what we want. But we are doing things exactly how we're supposed to be doing them by the book. And we're allowing councillors uh, their constitutional right to express themselves and to be in that council. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, in your view, is the role of uh, the speaker in the context of impartiality? How are you expect? What are what are the expectations of a speaker? Okay, I'm going to give you practical things mm-hmm. that we have done in the 12 months plus that we've been there. Mm-hmm. We've ensured that uh, the council meeting that takes place, councillors are able to express themselves. Okay. There is a big misunderstanding and we need to teach councillors of the Action SA and some of uh, DA. Mm-hmm. Because some are even elder men and women. I, we don't know what they've been doing for the 20 years. The office of the speaker is the nerve center of service delivery. Why do I say that? Our work is to have to have oversight over the executive. We are allowed to make the mayor, the mayor account. In council, we ask the mayor, what is happening with that project? What is happening there? Any member of the mayoral committee, the mayor, any HOD we can call to account. So when we are exercising our role, uh, our oversight role, we are not encroaching on anyone's space. We are actually ensuring that things are happening the way they are supposed to be happening. Titus, we have capacitated, uh, I think, 40% of the councillors in, 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 in our chambers mm-hmm. that voluntarily, Mm-hmm. Uh, wanted to be capacitated. We're taking them through an adult-based education 
Uh, most of our councillors, by the time they finished, they would have had metric. Mm-hmm. They would have had a three-year diploma thing that they're doing in blocks because they are old now. They can't go through that thing of the school. Sure. And these councillors, majority of them are not EFF councillors. Mm-hmm. So we've been impartial in calling everyone to take the opportunity. Every day of our lives, Titus, we go to the ground. They, we, EFF does not even have a single word uh, in Ekurulen, but we are on the ground with councillors uh, of uh, other parties, assisting them, quelling uh, the tensions on the ground, addressing communities, because some Agere, you know, they address on WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. And once the situation is volatile, you have to sure. go and rescue sure. the situation. Mm-hmm. So we do that with the utmost impartiality because mm-hmm. our role is to ensure that everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing, is to ensure that service delivery is supposed to be doing, uh, service delivery people are supposed to be doing exactly that. We call HODs, we call uh, those uh, administrators on behalf of the ward councillor to um, hold them to account, Mm -hmm. to ask why are there no services in this ward and so on and so on, which are not uh, wards of the EFF. So uh, that is what we do on a daily basis. We we do the work regardless of where the work is supposed to take place. Mm -hmm. We don't say, no, this is not our space, that is whoever's space. We take care of the work of all the MMCs of the mayoral committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a female speaker, do you, how do you feel about being a female speaker and what has been some of the profound or key uh, moments that you, you may have had in your uh, tenure? Yeah, well, you know, I'm grateful that uh, the EFF, mm-hmm. which I'm a member of, is an organization mm-hmm. that practices what it preaches. Our organization believes in women leadership. It's not those uh, things that they say as a by the way. I mean, you can see uh, with the political uh, leadership of our organization, I mean, three of the top six are female. Mm -hmm. In all our councils, in all our legislature, Mm -hmm. 50% females, 50% males. Mm -hmm. And this has been a a defining moment uh, for, for some of us. It has been a defining moment and it shows that uh, the future is indeed female Mm -hmm. and we are in an organization that uh, practices what it preaches Mm -hmm. and that believes in the empowerment of women and we are grateful uh, for for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've we've done a lot, Titus, you know, we've done so much, but um, when we first arrived, we had to do an audit of all employees to check. Oh, I remember the issue of ghost yes, uh, workers. There are many ghost workers. <laughs> How did you workers. manage to eliminate those, by the way? It's it's very simple. <laughs> you asked uh, HR to <laughs> print out the entire uh, uh, payroll, <laughs> right? And then you tell them everyone must come with identification and physically be there. <laughs> if they are not there, they don't exist. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So there's biometrics and all these things to ensure that it is this person and so on. Mm-hmm. And we found that a lot of people have even been sitting home since uh, the COVID. So those are the type of things that uh, we discovered. But it's equally important to know your workforce, to know where you are, who you are with, and mm-hmm. how do you then move forward. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we, we've we done a lot. We've engaged communities that have not been touched before, your LGBTQIA plus community. Sure. In, uh, in Ekuruleni, we had um, our first pride in Ekuruleni in our tenure. We, we went to the Justice Department at the Palm Ridge Court mm-hmm. to seek justice uh, for, for victims of uh, LGBTQIA+. Mm-hmm. Plus, and there, there is just too much mm-hmm. that we have done. And obviously there's more to be done. And uh, we need the political will from everyone who's in this school governance mm-hmm. to ensure that we sustain what we've been doing. Have you ever felt overwhelmed as the speaker? Because uh, just like any other uh, ordinary sitting of council where the EFF is present, obviously it's not going to be as business as usual, as uh, you you may have said. 
Uh, obviously, the EFF will demand accountability. Have you ever been in a position where you felt like, yo, this is too much, I can't take it anymore? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to take it, Titus. Uh, sure. We have to take it and uh, it, it must never be about us. Mm -hmm. It must never be about us. It must be about the task at hand. It mm -hmm. must be about the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the time when I wake up, when I open my eyes, I think of the task at hand. I think of the responsibility. And that motivates me every day to say, let me wake up. And when you see CIC uh, hoping uh, in three, four provinces in one day, sure. and when you are just in the city of Ekurulen, yeah. you can see that um, 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 you need to put in the effort to mm. ensure that. Walala the, wasala. Yes, mm -hmm. so you cannot be found wanting. Sure. Um, we, we do our utmost. Uh, we, mm -hmm. are we are guided by uh, the documents of the organization on how to handle most issues. And if you follow that guide, uh, there isn't much that should overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. But obviously, the space is tricky. The space is sensitive. When you are dealing with people, uh, people are able to vent out their emotions. I mean, I remember when I went to Tembisa, mm -hmm. and it was literally a shouting match. We had around 1,000 people mm -hmm. in there. And, you know, I had a lot of people worried to say, Yo, and I said to them, no. When these things happen, you don't take them personally. The people are angry at the system, not at Ntabi saying as a person. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that even ourselves at the EFF, we are existing here because we are equally angry mm -hmm. uh, 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 at the system that has been a system of injustice for so many years. Mm -hmm. So you must be empathetic, be able to put yourself in a, a person's place and just do what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about the the system that the EFF is against, the there was a, um, a ratings agency, Moody's, which downgraded the city into junk status. Did you invite them? <laughs> do they even have a scope? <laughs> what is their responsibility there? Do they have the authority to actually carry out such assessments? Well, uh, Moody's has no authority whatsoever to say anything about us. I mean, we can just define them as economic gangsters that want to define uh, the lives of the people of Ekuruleni. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, they they downgraded us to junk status, and then when the governance ranking index came in a couple of days ago, then they then put us on stable. Uh, mm -hmm. with the city of Tswane. The city of Tswane is the, the last ranking municipality uh, under sure. the DA mm -hmm. in Gauteng. We are number one yeah. in Gauteng. So we could not understand uh, uh, where do they get off, to put it mildly. Mm -hmm. So they have no authority over us. They are just economic gangsters mm -hmm. that try to manipulate the, the economy and all these type of things. Obviously, for the benefit of uh, white monopoly capital and whoever they are saving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about whoever they are saving, Action SA has been so vocal about unfounded reports to say the city has got uh, this ailing, uh, st uh, you know, uh, status quo in terms of the finances. Would you conclude and say, in fact, maybe Action SA and Moody's are in cahoots? <laughs> well, those Action SA councillors need to go to capacitation of councillors program. Mm -hmm. They need to be capacitated so that they understand how finances work, so that they understand how Municipal Finance Management Act works, mm -hmm. how the Treasury Regulations Act. Obviously, they are aligned uh, to some of these, uh, uh, the monopoly capital institutions mm -hmm. that are very clear to be sponsored from a particular place. I mean, you see, even the, the airtime that the media has been given them. Sure. I mean, I, I was so surprised that no one asked them. Or I, they quoted the wrong report like 90 percent, actually the entire time. Mm -hmm. They were talking about the 2024 Auditor General's report. That report does not exist. The audit of that report has not even started as we speak now. It will start in September. Mm -hmm. And no one mm -hmm. 
-hmm. No one in the media actually corrected that. No one gave them a lesson or so to say, oh, uh, mm -hmm. you don't know what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. So it is very clear that their agenda is one. And we cannot accept that the majority of our people will be uh, uh, channeled mm -hmm. uh, by people that uh, don't know what, what is happening. And we are grateful to have these type of platforms and equally our social media space where we are able to correct the narrative. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if we can just uh, deep into what is expected to happen in the next uh, council meeting and understand after the mayor was uh, ousted by council, seven days was given for the next uh, sitting. What can we expect? I understand maybe we may be a bit uh, behind, uh, the results may be out, but just to understand the, the processes, what is expected to happen? Well, uh, obviously the leadership will give guidance on what is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But in our role as the speaker is to ensure that the uh, municipal electoral officer, mm -hmm. which is the city manager, and the um, IEC are, are, are in an enabling environment for them to be able to facilitate the election of the new executive mayor. Mm -hmm. So that is our role. Uh, the election of the executive mayor will take place on, on, on Thursday mm -hmm. and we'll see what the outcome is. Like when I started the show, I indicated that you are one decisive uh, kind of a speaker. And I understand that you're a scholar. Uh, if perhaps we may just <laughs> <laughs> reflect on some of your academic achievements. Okay, um, I'm currently a Master's of Law student. Mm -hmm. I'm an LLM student. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I have an LLB. Sure. And um, I hold a national diploma from the University of Johannesburg in mm -hmm. Information Systems. Okay. Um, I've got a few certificates in terms of uh, municipal governance leadership, in terms of project management, so, yeah, we, there's still a lot to be learned, but, yeah, we, we are heading towards that. And obviously, the EFF will not allow us to rest. As sure. a public rep of the EFF, yeah. you are expected to be studying at a, any given time, even during an election year. Yeah. yeah. And someone with an LLB, why did you end up in, in, in politics? Being in politics has nothing to do with, be, with having an LLB. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will tell you my history, uh, mm -hmm. even in my family. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, if my fam if I had to bet on my family, I can bet them on sure. this one. You know that thing, Titus, where in your family, Oba, uh, the go-to person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even outside being in politics, uh, you are that peacemaker, you are that firm person in the family who will tell the truth, whether uh, it's uh, to adults or your peers, right? Mm -hmm. So, and even in community, our community, uh, we've been very active. Uh, I mean, the school that uh, I've eventually adopted, I've always been a friend uh, to the school in that when we buy our monthly groceries, I will just add... Um, uh, packs of sanitary towels and then drop them off at the school. Then they will say, no, mama, uh, we need uh, size two, size three school shoes. And on our uh, normal, uh, you know, living this life, mm -hmm. we would do those things. Mm -hmm. But then you realize that there's so much to be done. Mm -hmm. And you being a, 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 a researcher, an IT specialist, limits your role. And my activism uh, was expanded uh, when I came into the EFF and the politics. And that's where I saw that, you know, no, no, um, one needs to, to have a bigger constituency for whatever we're doing to have more impact. I mean, it cannot end with our family. If there's a sewer a best at our house, we go to the municipality mm -hmm. while all other people are suffering. So um, that's how we expanded our role in terms of activism. Mm -hmm. The issue of the LLB was that uh, as a public representative, one is a lawmaker, mm -hmm. one must ensure that these laws are implemented, one must ensure that everything is just uh, for whoever we're serving. Mm -hmm. So it requires you to get, obviously, the appropriate uh, knowledge 
to be able to execute those duties. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we've been taken to court, people have threatened this and that, but having that knowledge assists in be able to, to in being able to execute your duty, in being able to be independent. Because some of the things you can tell Ura, mm-hmm. we're just gonna quote a section to say this uh, what the law is saying. Every other thing we are not going to take. Mm-hmm. And it makes our work much simpler. It so you're able us, to interpret the, yes, the law, the rules. Extreme, of, yeah, yes, yes. Concept, we yeah. do have, obviously, uh, administrators, but uh, Titus, let me assure you, <laughs> the worst downfall of any politician is not reading. Sure. Because administrators will dribble you any time of the day. They will throw you yeah. under the moving bus. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it assists in, in, in our everyday work, in interpreting, in being able to take care of social issues and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you 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 don't regret being uh in politics even though you studied LLB or the fact that you're not actually a lawyer as because some people or parents would expect that okay because my child is uh, pursuing law therefore they'll become a magistrate or a lawyer and all those kind of things. Well, um, I'm definitely an advocate. Oh, advocate. <laughs> okay, we must put the title. Not that advocate. <laughs> okay. But in our work, sure. we advocate for justice oh, for sure. our people. We mm-hmm. advocate for our people to have better service delivery <laughs> and sure. for their dignity to be restored. Sure, yeah. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's absolutely uh, inspirational because even in the EFF, education is sacrosanct. Yes. Uh, EFF public reps must go to school. It is one of the requirements, you know, mm-hmm. as a leader. I mean, how do you lead people? Through what? Based on what? <laughs> I mean, we just need some sort of uh, reference. So to have people like you who are learned, uh, who have got interest in, um, in education, it actually also inspires the future generation and it also puts the EFF in a position of authority and credibility that yes. is the is the organization that leads through, you know, superior logic that takes education very seriously. And of course, when you look at the role of uh, the public reps, you are expected as a, you are the member of the RCT yes. in Gauteng. Um, obviously, you didn't just wake up and become a member. You ought to have gone through some processes, tried and tested. Perhaps let's just now reflect mm-hmm. on the work that you may have done in at the at the regional level. Okay, before I became a an RCT member of mm-hmm. Egrulene, sure, I'm on my second term. Mm. Yeah, I was a chairperson of my branch for two terms. Wow. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I've been elected many times. Sure. So uh, we've been represent- That's a vote of confidence, yes, by the way. Yes, sure. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been representing uh, a lot of people for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And um, that in itself puts that responsibility on <laughs> I you. like the way you put it. <laughs> we've been representing people. <laughs> We are. <laughs> we are not representing our own jackets, you know? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So it, it puts a lot of responsibility yeah. and credibility to you as a person. Or mm. I mean, if people have been giving you that vote of confidence uh, for so many times, mm-hmm. then it says that there's something that um, one is doing. It shows that we've been able to observe uh, organizational discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, throughout the years, there was no point where I was in conflict with my organization. And it, 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 it instills uh, uh, being a true uh, a, a loyal cadre mm-hmm. of an organization. So consistency is very critical. Mm-hmm. And it, it builds character. It builds a person that has credibility, and you would know that perception in politics is very great. And uh, once you, you you are perceived in a certain manner, mm-hmm. then there's credibility, then the trust element is built, and people are able to trust that you will do what uh, you are committing to do, mm-hmm. and which is what we've been doing throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I understand you were attending the PETF. How's the door-to-door, how's the route to victory actually going? How can you describe it? Are we ready to take over? We are ready to take over. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we we are alone, to be honest, in this space. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we need to take uh, uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. It's something that we need to worry to say, where are the other political parties? Why are they not engaging people? Why are they not on the ground? Because every corner when you go, the EFF is on the ground. We were at the rent show. We were at the churches uh, throughout the Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's positivity, especially amongst young people, amongst first-time voters. And that is something that we must uh, embrace uh, as a country uh, to say that there is indeed a paradigm shift whereby uh, voting is not seen uh, only for older people as a by-the-way type of mm -hmm. process. And we must be grateful for the EFF for bringing that dynamic uh, into the the space of voting. And we've done that with uh, a, a lot uh, with uh, the student command, the EFF student command mm -hmm. at the tertiary institutions. So it's going very well. Mm -hmm. There is much to be done, obviously, and uh, you know, as the EFF, we, we sleep with our boots on. Sure. Yeah, there's no time to rest, yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the road to, 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 to victory, you have been on the ground in Ekuruleni, where you were born. How does it feel like for one to be born in one place and come back and serve the, their, their own constituents or the people they in fact, uh, or their own community where they come from. Are you proud to be uh, someone who grew up in Ekuruleni and now at this point in time, you are able to plow back to the community? There's nothing like it, uh, Titus. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think maybe that is the part where every day you don't need to be pushed. Mm -hmm. Every day you know that the people that you are saving are people that you grow up with, mm -hmm. are people that know you by your first name, mm -hmm. are people that in a community meeting, they will call you with that name that <laughs> they were calling you yeah. at, in high school with. But equally, to the, the confidence mm -hmm. that uh, the people would have. I mean, I have friends that predicted when we were much younger in high school to say, hey, when mm -hmm. are you going to be a politician? And, sure. and now you are here and they are the ones that are, are holding you accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't run away from people that, you know, they know where you live. Mm -hmm. They know your children. They know where your children go to school. When we go to those things of high school reunions, mm -hmm. it's people that, you know, they sit with you and say, hey, we have storage there, ingi, ingi. We have in in mama e pension it in 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 it it gives you more responsibility. It allows you to be on your toes all the time because this is it's like you are saving your family. Mm -hmm. There is no other place that you can run to. Uh, it's 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 your home that you need to ensure that things go right, that you need to ensure that your people are serviced. Mm -hmm. I mean that thing that says charity begins at, at home. home, yes. I'm feeling it in Ekuruleni. Mm -hmm. And we are very grateful for that. Uh, uh, our friends, our family, people that we grew up with, call us every day to say, no, we see you, girl. You are doing very well. Keep on doing that. And you, you also build social cohesion mm -hmm. in that the circles that we grew up in, the hip-hop circles, circles of the, the society, Zabo Me, it's people that you know. When there's a problem of service delivery, they're able to say, no, no, last time a society in Untabi saying, Ute Magne problem sends us so. And they do that. You build a, a, a cohesive communities. You, 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 you push them to, to understand what is expected of them as yeah. society, mm -hmm. and which is a great thing. Absolutely, because you also hold uh, community meetings in the form of uh, imbizos yes. where you educate them and interact with uh, their communities. Now, what sort of change would you do you envisage for the community or the residents of uh, Ekurulin, not necessarily ahead of the elections, but what is the change that is necessary for the community you live in? 
The change that we have seen and which is necessary mm -hmm. is that the people of Egruleni are waking up. Mm -hmm. The people of Egruleni, uh, the majority, mm -hmm. uh, are no longer those party loyalists, people who believe government must do everything, people who are not decisive. Mm -hmm. Hence, I'm so hopeful that after the elections, we are going to see a different Egruleni mm -hmm. in, in the sense of the political landscape. Mm -hmm. Because the people of Egruleni, now they know what is due to them. They know how to hold public representatives accountable mm -hmm. because we have been in that space. We have been a responsive government to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they see us every day, like Titus every day, literally. When you fetch your kid from school, they are here. With probably some caucus with uh, maybe a few girls from high school. Sure. Hey, it's no problem because majority mm -hmm. of the people we grew up with remained in Ekurulene or their mm -hmm. parents are still in Ekurulene. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you would go to the, the, the soccer thing mm -hmm. and then they are talking about it and then you are at the mall, mm -hmm. you know, society. So there's always activism. There's always people knowing and speaking about their rights to service delivery and their responsibilities mm -hmm. in the entire thing. In a community meeting, people uh, will no longer say, yeah, hey, sifuna ini, sifuna ini, sifuna ini. Other people just stand up and say, but you have uh, uh, rooms, uh, tenants that are not uh, accounted for by the municipality. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are building a community that is uh, able to stand... Uh, on its own, that is able to raise uh, um, issues uh, of community, that is able to to understand what are their rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're sort of conscientizing the the, the community, the residents, yeah, as it were. Yeah. Now let's look at your experience in government. I understand it's not the first time you work in government, but this time you are. Um, in uh, political space, but I understand you have once served in, in, in government. If we may just reflect at some of the experiences that you have accumulated over the past. Yeah, it's been a long past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's make it short. Yeah, so um, yeah. I started my my um, employment history mm -hmm. in, in Bembe District Municipality. Oh. Oh, that okay. is on the other side of town uh, okay. where I worked as an information officer. Mm -hmm. The job entailed uh, statistics, mm -hmm. going around in primary health care facilities, uh, capturing the information, doing an analysis, the projections, what is needed there, what mm -hmm. is the prevalence in terms of diseases, mm -hmm. and so on. And then from then, I went to Bembe District Municipality okay. where I worked as a service delivery monitoring and evaluation officer. Mm -hmm. And this is after Collins Chabani, the late minister Collins Chabani introduced mm -hmm. a performance monitoring and evaluation. Mm -hmm. So this entailed me giving support to counselors, oh. assisting them in their oversight, okay. in checking if projects are there, mm -hmm. if they have been executed, if the money is actually been utilized for what it is budgeted for. Mm -hmm. From Bembe, I moved back home uh, to Ekuruleni, where I was a researcher for the Municipal Public Accounts Committee. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I think from then we could see that things are really going down. The situation is not good in Ekuruleni. Mm -hmm. And then we took the decision that, you know, we have to be on the other side to make sure that things happen, mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, there's change. And then from then, I was elected as a PR counselor of the EFF mm -hmm. in 2016. I was number 22 on the list okay. of 24. Sure. <laughs> so I was the first, uh, one of the first generation of counselors of the EFF in 2016. Wow. Yeah. And then I'm on During my, the local government elections. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm okay. on, I was a chairperson of my branch then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You said that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, I'm currently on my second term. Mm -hmm. I'm a returning counselor of the EFF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll be on my eighth year in, 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 in August. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's what we've been doing. Uh, the experience of government and local government 
uh, is what we've been through so many years. So it's it's very clear that we know what is expected of us. Mm -hmm. And it makes things much simpler, uh, Titus, if you've been on both sure, sides. Sure. You know what is expected from administrators. There are no mm -hmm. dodgy things. Wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And even they know that you know. Mm -hmm. There's no hiding anything anywhere because you know what is expected. You know what the laws say, what the rules say, and you are able to hold people accountable. So it's it's been quite a long time. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about the uh, mayor who has been removed? Do you have anything to say? Uh, well, it, it was unfortunate that he was removed mm -hmm. uh, because of the issues that I've advanced earlier. To say it's not about him as a person. Mm -hmm. It's about the arrangement of co-governance not mm -hmm. going well. You know, Titus, because the ANC has neglected mm -hmm. formalizing something tangible and mm -hmm. feasible mm -hmm. for co-governance or coalitions, mm -hmm. we are in the situation that we are in. I mean, they've always had that uh, uh, arrogance of saying, no, we have the majority and what, what. And once things started falling apart, as early as your 2016, they did not do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So all of us then becomes casualties of this vacuum. Mm -hmm. Whatever they've put in place, it's not a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a tangible thing that they can lose majority and then they say, no, no, the, whoever is in the majority of the numbers and not of the 50% plus one must take lead of government. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So... um uh, the former mayor of Ekuruleni was just a victim of a system that uh, is, not, is not in place. Mm -hmm. And coalitions and co-governance is a very difficult space. It's very new to all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are finding it as we go along, but it requires a lot of cooperation. It requires that people must put their pride aside and focus on what is at hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if parties that are in that arrangement differ in ideology, in policy, you can't differ on providing water. Sure. You can't differ on giving people proper sanitation, mm -hmm. giving girls sanitary towels and all those mm -hmm. type of things. So mm -hmm. those are the basics that we should be agreeing on. But equally, it, it, it's very intricate, this thing mm -hmm. in co-governance. And mm -hmm. it needs a proper system yeah. in place. Talking yeah. about co-governance and coalition, uh, there are people who are watching from home and may not necessarily understand the repercussions of coalition. Uh, if you may just give them an advice ahead of the elections, because we need people to make, um, you know, an informed decision when they go to the polls. Because uh, if we are in this mess because of, you know, the people said, you know, we are not, we are not voting the EFF as the outright majority or as the majority party, but we are voting so and so and so and so. So now, what advice would you give to the people of South Africa ahead of the 2024 general elections in the context of coalition government? What is critical, Titus, is that uh, our people need to observe and understand the political landscape. Mm -hmm. in the sense that they need to know what is going on. If you are unable to read, watch the news. Mm -hmm. That will tell you exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. They must lose this thing of a political party loyalty mm -hmm. because there are people that have been in the political space for time immemorial However, sure. we do not see what they are doing. Mm -hmm. We are in this mess that we are in because of them. But people are still loyal. People are still loyal to, to Mandela. Mandela is long gone, and our space is much different now, mm -hmm. and it requires all of us to be living in the current times. Mm -hmm. And critical is that we must observe leaders of uh, political parties. Mm -hmm. We must observe them how they are leading their people, how they are running their political parties. Mm -hmm. 
and ask yourself, Ra, moto wa no pala kupatela di salary. Are they going to run the country? <laughs> Just to give they it an example. Pay rent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You see, mm-hmm. yeah. So those things are important. And our people, even in the space of governance, mm-hmm. they need to ensure titles that they participate in these debates. We have public participation in town halls, mm-hmm. small community meetings, big community meetings. Our people must participate so that they see and observe the people that uh, are leading them. Mm-hmm. But equally, what is most critical mm-hmm. is that people must vote for the EFF. Sure, absolutely. That instinct that one always has uh, tight as where in, in the workplace uh, there's injustice, you are abused and called uh, with those type of names and you are thinking of the EFF, that thing, the instinct that you have when you see running water, you are thinking of the EFF, that exact instinct Mm -hmm. should be the instinct that tells you that EFF is the correct party to vote for. Mm -hmm. And our people should just do the right thing for them, for Mm -hmm. themselves and for the future of this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. And they must be rest assured that the... City of Ekuruleni is not as dire as it is purported to be. Well, the governance ranking <laughs> index says the sure. city of Ekuruleni is mm-hmm. the number one performing city mm-hmm. in Gauteng, mm-hmm. and it is the number one performing city in terms of leadership mm-hmm. in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there are no lies there. There are no stories there. It's it's those are the facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. The situation is not dire like we've said before. Sure. The Auditor General has uh, 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 um, expressed themselves. Mm-hmm. The Parliamentary Committee led by um, oh, China to Dovu also came to our city mm-hmm. to confirm that uh, Ekurulen is the best run city in, in mm-hmm. the entire country. AGSA has said it. The, the Governance Ranking Index people have said it. So there's no two ways about it. We are doing extremely well in the city of Ekorulen. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's no two ways about it. And we have seen the work of the EFF uh, in Ekuruleni, And uh, we hope to continue seeing more uh, action uh, going into the elections and beyond. Faitan Tawiseng Chivenga, Rikore Buesa Ngamanda. That's all we had time for, for today. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Titus. Nah. Ah. All right, so we have come to the end of today's uh, episode of the EFF uh, podcast. Uh, quite informative uh, fight and Tabi Singh uh, Chivenga from the city of, of Ekuruleni uh, coming through for us here. Yeah. So please continue uh, subscribing to the EFF uh, YouTube uh, channel. Remember, our land and jobs now stop load shedding. Uh, We've come to the end of the show. My name is Titus Tungu. Until we meet again, good Ekwenget. Kanimamba. Stand up, South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a covert thing.